Take three. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So, gone for a little bit because I didn't have my editing software. Uh, just tiny life things. Just getting in the way. Oh, forgot. So, um, with this one, it's gonna be for uh, Netflix's new movie called The Woman in the Window. Yeah, it's like, like if you've ever seen uh, Disturbia, it's like that. Um, yeah, it's it's very much the same concept. She's a prisoner in her own home and in her mind. And like they don't give like a good enough backstory, but she's like. She's either a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And um she got into this accident um like a long, long ago. Probably they don't give an accurate timeline, but probably like a year, year and a half before she stays in this like um seems like it's in New York, so I guess it's a house house, but like she has like tenants. Uh, different tenants that rent out different sections of the house um, like the upstairs and like the basement area and I don't remember his name but uh, the guy that played uh, the new Captain America like that guy is in this um, Amy Adams is in it Gary Oh, what's his face? Mm. Actually, I don't think his name is Gary. I probably got that wrong. Actually, yeah, it is. I'm right. It's Gary Oldman. Yeah. The guy that played a uh, series from Harry Potter and uh, he was in the Batman movies. So. I forgot. No, it's. Yes. Um, he was in this movie, Amy Adams. Anthony Mackie was in the movie and oh now I don't remember her name I couldn't remember when I was watching it but Julianne Moore is in it um and she plays the ex-wife wife the, the explanation is kind of finicky but the wife ex-wife of uh, Gary Oldman's character that I do not remember but of Gary Oldman's character plays the ex-wife, wife, his, and um, from the get-go, this movie is kind of weird. But like the way they tell it, like day by day, something happens. Well, no, it's going day by day. Like I think this happens in a week and a half span, and I'm gonna be kind of looking up and down because, like, I wrote obviously some notes because like this movie was like two hours and some minutes long so that was a lot to retain from a movie that nothing really happened I'm obviously gonna have to cut this out because he feels the need to always text me when I'm doing something so. um but yes uh, she has the psychiatrist psychologist I forgot which one it is but she has I don't know how to pronounce it but it's fear basically of the outside but like you oh, no my bad it's the fear of extreme fear of things on the outside I'll try and put up like a definition or something um, but like it's the extreme fear of outside things even things in your own home like you may be afraid to leave like your room but it's like a huge fear of that almost to the uh, debilitating um and so
All right, and I'm back because my thing fell off. So that's great. <laughs> so yeah, in the Adams character, she has agoraphobia. I think I pronounced that right. Not really sure. You know what? I may use. Mm. a mirror right quick and I'm using a sponge because I still have some in here but I'm basically hitting pan at this point like I need I need to get another one but it's like $50 but it lasted like a year so I have to get another one And, um, oh, stop. Forgot to put it on my lid. Okay, so, and at the start of the movie, it starts off with her talking to her psychiatrist. Um, I can't tell. Because it wasn't exactly a date, so I couldn't tell if, like, it was. before the accident or after the accident it was kind of hard to tell like i couldn't really tell if it was before because she was dressed up so like mm, like because she was like dressed like she was mostly in the right state of mind um but like and, and then it's like it cut to present day and it, she was like in shambles. Yeah, and she was like in shambles because she was like basically a shell of what she used to be like before the accident. And when the accident happened um, with her and her husband, like they were driving on the snowy, dangerous road that honestly no sane person would be driving on. But you know. But for the sake of the movie, she was driving on it, you know. Because I know I wouldn't be driving in those snowy conditions. I'm guessing it was like on a mountain. But I couldn't really tell. But you know, we'd be thinking she's her significant other's alive and her kid is alive. Um And then it turns out, like the whole time we think they're alive. Funny enough. Like like it seems like she's um like it seems like she's um talking to them on the regular and having arguments with them but the conversations really are from um when they were alive Um, it's like the, see I have notes but I'm literally not even using them. <laughs> I'm trying to go off of memory but if I'm looking down, excuse me, um, and yeah, sorry, just really apologize for that. So yeah, um. Mm, it's too late. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. 
So yes, probably gonna be a slight cough. Hold up. Ha! Huh. Do I want to, I'm gonna use a sponge to blend this out. Probably should use the bottom half first, but hey. <laughs> and oddly enough, well, maybe not. How does this one? <sighs> okay, so I don't think she's like a practicing psychiatrist. She's just she just still like has her license um which is just like uh so i think because i was trying to figure out how is this woman earning money if she's not if she's too afraid to like go out and have people really come in her house how is she still earning money well, it's from her being a, basically a landlord, I guess. Okay. And, um, the neighbor's son across the street. We're just going to call the neighbor across the street. Um, <laughs> he, um, he comes over to talk to Amy Adams. And it turns out that, um... that he's being abused but then the movie tries to make you feel crazy for um for thinking that maybe he might be getting abused but he's actually well i don't know maybe he is okay it's not real life but yeah maybe he is actually getting abused i like um i like so that looks weird um so like um he comes over after being beat up by gary olden and um oh you know what i really need to get another palette of this because this is disheartening i don't like the way i just did that <laughs> So he comes over to talk to Amy Adams. Amy Adams is like, you know, well, I don't think she kind of invites him to come over. And it's like, mm, should you really be inviting him over? Ah, no, not really. But then like, do I want to add highlight? But then randomly, like it's not even like provoked, but randomly, um, Julianne Moore's character, I don't remember her name, but she plays the character of Gary Oldman's ex-wife. And um, turns out, And like Amy Adams character asks her hey are you such and such and she says well how'd you know that and by that comment alone she could have been like lying in her response because it's it's a yes or no like question oh man I mean answer it's a yes or no answer and she's like well how would you know that how do you know I'm like um ma'am just tell me and um let's see so yeah she ends up <laughs> she ends up leaving and they have a glass of wine and stuff and they start talking about different life things but then amy adam adams ask her a question and then she's like dodges it doesn't really answer it um and that would have like set me off to like mm. she's lying about who she is but amy adams character is like 
so afraid that to interact with people so she doesn't really bother asking her again even though I'm like I asked you a question just answer it you know it's not that um if you're lying just tell me not not if you're lying just tell me the truth but no just tell me you don't need to lie or beat around the bush or something And so yeah, Julianne Moore's character eventually leaves. Uh, yeah, that. Ju yeah, Julianne Moore's character eventually leaves, and then I think she goes across the street. Amy Adams is being nosy, pulling a Disturbia, and being like, "Oh, I'm gonna look through the window with uh, binoculars." Not binoculars. That's wrong. She just looks through the window, and then she picks up her camera, a really nice camera, and um starts taking pictures because her friend is getting beat up across the street and then she tries to go over there gets hit by a car um not at this point the movie's moving at a decent a decent pretty decent pace and um So yeah, the movie's moving at a pretty decent pace at this point. I'm gonna put on this dark, dark purple. And um, did I even turn it back on? Okay, yeah. Um, she gets hit by a car and then police come over because she got hit by a car and I guess somebody took her back to her apartment. It kind of fades out kind of weird. Like it was made really good, but like it was just pretty mediocre. They keep doing that with like female mostly led movies. Like it'll be written pretty good but then like the ending and like in between will be just terrible and it's weird and annoying because like Disturbia made pretty good decent movie for I think it was 2009 when it came out for 2009. This movie pretty mediocre um yeah oh did I really? Why does it look worse on this side? Oh man. I hate purple. So now we have to match it on the other side or else I'm gonna look like just what the crap. I tried. I really tried. Ew. Is that a purple or a blue? Well, I'm using it. And so yeah, the detective comes over. Okay. The detective comes over and um questions her and his partner is like kind of annoying. She kind of reminds me of the detective uh the female lead detective on uh Gone Girl. That lady, well that character. She kind of reminds me of that. Um and then you know everybody's like standing around and well, I'm so skipping I'm so <laughs> but like you know some days pass after they tell her to leave leave them alone like I don't know you please just leave me alone and um And also brought up some more. Hmm. And the downstairs tenant's name is David. Pretty sure I had it right. Yeah, the downstairs tenant's name is David. See? Yeah, I don't. Mm. That is annoying. Ah, found it. So yeah, David, the downstairs tenant, funny enough, had a relationship of sorts. Oh man, my hand is shaking. Yep, that's not gonna work. Had a relationship with uh, Amy Adams, the psychologist's friend. And um, 
when nobody was be uh, believing Amy Adams' character, I was like, hmm. Well, either she's genuinely crazy or what. And they almost gave a Inception type vibe. Yeah, see, that is annoying. An Inception type vibe with it. Like, mm, no. I was trying to find my other one. And I can't find it. So that's great. And um, at one point I asked myself, is it an illusion? Is it real? Is it just the meds? Turns out it is, in fact, the meds. that were contributing to her hallucinations of thinking she was talking to her ex-husband and her dead daughter. Neither one of them are alive, um, as by my previous sentence. <laughs> Which, yeah, that, that accident, you know, and that made-up scenario is literally the reason why I don't ever want to drive in inclement weather that looks like that. But yes, the detective, I don't know what his name is. I, I'm pretty sure they did not say it. But yeah, they were like, um, so yeah, your medication is the reason for your hallucinations. Your medication is the reason for you thinking that your husband, your dead ex-husband is alive and that you've been talking to him and your daughter. You have not. Tragic. Um, but yes. And um, yeah, he was like, yeah, they're dead. But then he's like really nice to her and gives her his policeman detective business card. And she looks, they did a good job on Amy looking like she was just, mm, like out of it. Mm. And yeah, they do a good job of making her look like she's out of it. And um, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did write it down, but I literally forgot. Okay, the next door neighbor kid name kid's name is he's like we'll say twenty, but he acts like a little. Uh, B word. And, um, his name's Ethan. And it turns out Ethan is a bad guy. Boom, boom, boom. That whole I'm getting abused was just a ploy. He wasn't really getting abused. Sad face. <laughs> I believed him too for like a little bit. And I was like, hmm. Anytime somebody. Especially a dude talks in like a whiny voice. He's really not that innocent. Um, Ethan tries to kill David, downstairs tenant, played by the guy, I forgot his name, that was in um, Captain. Oh my god. <laughs> that was in the show with uh, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. Yeah. And, um,. Ethan tries to kill him, and then uh, he isn't really dead for like a few minutes. And then like he goes back while Amy's just looking there, just looking like scared and disheveled. And then he like uh, actually kills him. Like ah oh, man, that sucks. And then uh, Amy's like upstairs trying to get away from Ethan. 
she still has on that robe every day like I get it it's probably a comfort thing but does she ever wash it probably not <laughs> and um yeah let's see it looks better like that because I purposely got wavy because nobody wants straight boring and um yeah so as we close to the end of the movie just a few things I'm just ugh, about this movie one it was a good set of people in it like the cast the actual cast or whatever but then it's like the direction at the end just kind of went you can go this way that way or that way super annoying well just not my favorite and then um like it ended just kind of poorly like it was better than Sloan that I watched on Netflix that that ending made absolutely no sense. I just want the ending to make a little bit of sense. And Netflix has a whole bunch of movies where the endings don't make any sense at all. Like, maybe like a little bit, but then they don't make any sense. And I'm just like, why don't they make any sense? I don't know. It's super annoying. This movie, like out of 10, probably like a five because like the writing was like there to be like great and all but then like the direction where it headed well where it went was like a four so it wasn't like matching like all the way the pace wasn't terrible but I did get confused at plenty of parts like why do we need a day by day and then her entry, her video entry thing, uh, right before the end, it's like, well, it's when she's about to leave, but it's before the end of the movie. Um, she like tells her truth, basically. Okay. Oh, that hair is probably all on that mic. I apologize. Anyways, thanks for watching. Okay, we're gonna have to cut out a little bit. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more. I'm trying not to let little things like Adobe Premiere Pro getting in my way. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Like and oh wait, no. let me see if I can fix my hair because that's gonna get on my nerves. Ooh. Like and subscribe. Oh, okay, nope. Before we cross the line and we reach Yeah, I changed my mind. Like and subscribe for more. Deuces.